All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on and paint the bumpers today. I wanna tell you a little bit about products. Um, Auto Art is what I'm gonna use for the base coat. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna use for clear. I'm not gonna tell you how I'm gonna do all this stuff, but the rest of this part is gonna be all in hypotheticals. How about that? Hypothetically, you could buy a oh, 48 state base coat for about $100. It's a, it's a brand called High Tech. High Tech, but it, I don't think it's available in California. The VOC limits for that. So hypothetically, you could buy that. It's about 100 bucks a gallon, maybe 110, maybe 120 now, I don't know. But it's really cheap and use that as a base and then you could go over it with a nice product. You could get a quart of the better stuff and go over the whole thing with that quart of, quart of uh, good base coat. And then, you know, go over it like once or twice um, after it's all painted. And then uh, go ahead and use a clear. Uh, there's one that's nationwide called... K-A-P-C-I, CAPC 6030. And it's a super high solids. Uh, I've known from using it in other states that it's uh, very easy to spray. The first coat, you just put it on a little bit on the lighter side, and then you kind of let that come pretty dry pretty good for maybe, you know, depending on the weather, say 70 degrees, probably 15 minutes, and then go over. So if it's colder, a little longer, hotter, a little shorter, um, and then go over that, and you can just keep going. You just go over the second coat. If you want to put three on there, you don't, probably don't have to stop between coats on that stuff. It just lays down, and it lays down like the old Centauri. If you've ever used DuPont Centauri back in the old days and you like the way that stuff sprayed, uh, you want to clear that sprays like that, that's pretty much what this one is. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to, um, but... Hypothetically, somebody could do that. My little spray area got a little bit of wind today, so I think if I'm ducked in here, it'll be all right just to get these bumpers done. I got these all prepped out with, I use 320, and then what I'm using in my base of the base coat is I'm adding additional binder. You might say, why did you why did you add more clear to it? Um, and the the thought is, I prepped this with 320, and it's going to be silver base coat, and I don't have a lot of material, so I want to fill in some of those scratches. So, and I don't want to use a sealer. So those are ideas you can do. It'll kind of fill help fill it in a little bit more, gives it some thickness to the material, and I'll put a couple coats of the base of the base on here um, using a different material for the base not like I, as I said that's all hypothetical what I'm actually doing is using a base coat underneath the base coat to uh, kind of fill it to cover it and everything else and I've added extra binder to that so it's going to be again a lot of clear in it to kind of fill in some of the ugly stuff the other thing you could do is seal everything, but cedar doesn't come in metallics, so this is a really cool way to do that. Or you could go and spray sealer on, and then you could spray on a coat of, they have a clear that you can spray on, inner coat clear, which that's kind of expensive too. Um, but they have another brand of it, I think by, it's, v it's 50, cent, 50 state legal, it's, let's see, uh, can't remember the name of it, darn it. It's a, it's another speed coat. You put that on, and then that would fill in some of the scratches. And then do your two coats of, or whatever, three coats of clear, or your three coats of, three coats of base, or whatever, and then do your stuff over that. And then what it does is just kind of fills the scratches. So that's the way it's going. Talk to you guys a little bit later.
well, we got all this kind of straightened out. I'm just going to get it not to be too terrible. So you can see, whatever, it's going to give it a skim coat of filler from where it's at. If it's wavy, that's fine. It's way underneath. And these here turned out pretty good. Let's see. Shades the top. Yeah, the top. I don't know if you can even see that. The lens is pretty dirty. I mean, the, what I'm looking at is dirty because dusty. Yeah, there's some flaws in them, but they'll look good when they're on the car. Once I get everything on them, everything should look pretty nice. So, that's the color, original color. So, what is that? L97. So, anyway, that looks good. Just giving us a sand with some heavy grit, 150. And then, uh, I think I'm just going to get some, I don't know what I'm going to use. Epoxy primer, maybe? Just shoot it with a coat of epoxy primer and then paint it. I'm not sure. I got something I'll use. I'm not sure what I'll use, but just a coat of primer and then wet coat right over that. It's going to be a wet on wet primer, so that's what I'm going to use. And yeah, it's going to have some, you're going to see some of this stuff, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It's going to be, you know, somebody else can decide to put bed liner in there. I don't like to put that stuff in. Some people hate it, and some people really like it. So I'm not gonna make opinions. So I, I, it's easier for me to just paint it. And it's another product I have to buy, so I've got tons of silver laying around. So I'll just use what I got. We'll go from there. All right, let's take a look here. I'll show you substantial dip there. Goes to a high spot down here. And this line went a little off, but I'm not really worried about that. I've just seen this big dip right here. It doesn't look very good, so it looks wavy. All right, we'll pull that one out. I'll show you how I do it. All right, I'll show you. It's down to about a sixteenth of an inch or less of filler. So then that's more than fine. I don't know if you can see that. It's nowhere near an eighth even. I can sit there and play with that and get it perfect, but honestly, if there's no reason to. It should look perfect when it's got the filler on it. 
I always look for rocky spots. There's a little tiny bit of a high right here. Actually, that's going to feather in okay. I could just heat that up real quick. In fact, I'll maybe I'll just do that real quick just for fun. All you got to do is just get it hot. It's going to want to bulge out. That's why I put the pins on it to make sure it bulges outward, not inward. Just get a little warm. But the metal just discolors. Okay. And then hit it with your wet rag. Sometimes you try and get a little bit more out of it. Sometimes you'll just tap on it a little bit. Don't beat on it too much. Just a little bit of tapping. Especially with this really thin metal, it shrinks really easily. Let's make sure I didn't do any, make anything worse. It's kind of, you get good at knowing where to stop. I probably should have stopped right where I was at. Sometimes if you start playing with it too much, then you start getting, you know, the oil drum thing going on again. Oil canning, drumming. You know, it got rid of that hump. You can see that's gone now. You know, it's still there. It's, it's so small, it's not even going to matter. Right now, the paint is a high. Over here, if you can even see the paint. I don't know if you can, but the paint is actually high. And then that gets feathered in, so it should be fine. Anyway, that's all you need is just heat it up. Shrink it down with a cloth. It actually shrinks when it's cooling. I'll get rid of my uh, marks there. Give that some filler. Call it good. So noticing there's a bit of rust behind these, so I took them off. I'm going to paint them off the truck. So I'm going to clean up that rust and paint that so that it'll last a little longer. So I took these off, prepped them with a the little 320 and some uh, 400 by hand. Just going to prime all these little areas, cut throughs and stuff. You know, let's prime the whole thing. It's not that big. It'll help it stick. I can see if I got any weird stuff on them. I've already check rag these and everything. It's just gonna. This stuff is. Uh, this will help with adhesion in the corners and all that too. Maybe I didn't get it sanded quite as good, but it's a light coat. One of these spray cans goes a long ways. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. A little edgy stuff there. Oh, let's leave it. I think that's on the tailgate side, anyways. Probably from opening and shutting it and getting stuff stuck in there. I'm not going to get it perfect. Just going to get it where it's nice. So, okay. Hold that dry. Put some basic clear on there. All right, let's take a look at what we're doing here. So I machine sanded this whole thing with 400. And of course, I didn't get that on film. I just, I'm in a hurry. I want to paint this thing tomorrow. So, I got a lot to do. After I've done it with 400... Now, you know, you don't have to use, I've done machine sand for uh, 220 and painted, and it comes out pretty good. Now, the problem is, you get your sanding scratches in there. So, like, 
The machine scratches might not show up very much with 400 in this, with solvent-based. If you're using water-based, no. None of that. Everything's got to be 600. This stuff does not, you know. Uh, I don't use it, so I don't know, but my buddies that use it, they tell me you got to use 600. And you're supposed to use, most of the guys use four, uh, 600 final sand even for this too. So I'm running through catching all my edges, getting all the little places I couldn't machine sand, right? And then I just run over it like this by hand. I'm looking for places that I missed or something like that little spot right there. Saw a little guide coat popping through. And I just kind of just check everything out by hand. So this is the only hand sanding I do really. I, I do I don't, I, my shoulders are bad, I'm, you know, pushing 60 now, so I don't want to, you know, I'm barely able to do this, so, anyway, I just go ahead and, uh, hand sand everything, I'm using 320, I don't know if I mentioned that, um, I'm using 320 right now, I, four, 400, I did 400 machine. The problem is when you use 320, of course, I'm going to put more scratches in it, right? So why would I do that? The reason that I'm using 320 is because it's a whole lot easier to sand with. And the second reason is I'm not using, that I use 400 when I machine sand it because the machine takes it down really fast. And I don't want to take off all this primer. If I take off all that primer, then I'm, you know, going to have to pre-prime and I have to re-sand. So I don't want to do that. So all my cut throughs, like right here, I'm just going to go ahead and spray can those with that wet on wet. I use a little wet on wet spray can, spray over that, spray over this, spray over that. And it kind of, it just makes them so they don't uh, bleed through as easy. It does, that's all it really does. I mean, it adheres to it better too. So if you got metal showing, you can put that on there and it sticks to the metal. You know. The one I'm using is a chameleon. I don't know. You can get it. There's a whole bunch of different ones. You know, the, you can't use the medallion for this, for the, you gotta sand that. You can't just go right over that with paint. The, but this, uh, stuff I'm using, the, uh, chameleon, you can. I read the can, see what it says. I don't know. I just ended up with those that product and didn't know what I was going to use it for, and I started using it for that. And I thought, man, this works really good for that. So, yeah. I don't know if they even sell it anymore, so I'll have to find something else. You could use a spray can epoxy prime. What I do is I'll tack rag the whole car and everything, ready for. Ready for paint, or you can do it a couple different ways, you know. You can tack rag the whole, or you can get it all ready, blow it off really good, and then you can go through and use that wet on wet, and you can spray can everything, and then you can go around with a scotch bright pad and a piece of sandpaper, really fine paper at that point, you know, like 400 or whatever, really fine, maybe even finer than that, maybe 600, and just kind of scuff it down. You can do it that way. There's a million ways to do this, okay? But I do it, I just do it and spray it. And it turns out really good. I, you know, I, I wasn't wasn't sure if I'd get rings, like where I spray it. It's really, really thin. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna get a ring where, it, you know, the overspray was, it doesn't. So that's cool, figured that out. Did some jams with it, figured that out with that. You know, it's just, the way I do stuff is, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not going to try something on a complete paint job, you know, spray a bunch of primer on and try it. I'm going to try it on the jams or something like that, some, or a small piece or something first, or I'll try it on the whole thing. That way I don't, you know, end up having to repaint a whole car. It's just too expensive. Look how much materials are. They're ridiculously expensive. So... Anyway, I'm just going to go through, I hand sand the whole car, check it all out, just run through, find little dents maybe, found a couple dents already, check it out with my hand, you know, 
working my way around. I'm on my chair. Because this thing's so low to the ground, hurt my back just trying to do it. So anyway, that's what I'm doing right now. It's a whole process of doing the whole car. It's, you got, you know, you got to go through your body work, then you do your feather sanding, then you do your priming, then you block sand, then you prime again. After that, I got to mask this still. And you got to, don't forget to mask everything. Hmm. Check engine oil. Hmm. Mask that off too. But anyway. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go through and after you've done all the, all that stuff, then you do your final hand sand. Yeah. Then you hope you got it all right. Just go for it. Usually turns out pretty good. Sometimes you'll see less stuff than what you thought. Sometimes things won't show up. Sometimes you'll find a dent that you didn't know was there. It's just the way it is. You can always repaint it. You can always touch it up. You can always, you know. I remember my first time painting the whole car. I wasted so many days of trying to get it all ready. And then... The next one I did, I just, went, ah, heck with it, painted it, and I went, wow, you know, it turned out a lot better than I thought it would. And then you get better at figuring out what stuff's going to show and what isn't. You know, it's just, just go for it. You don't want to overthink anything. So anyway, I'll do the whole thing like this. I've already done the top surfaces. So I do the top surfaces standing up. I'll go through all these. And then I'll push my hand along the corners and knock down. Because when you're machine sanding right here, you're going to get a white, uh, an edge that's kind of like that. Well, if you just take your sandpaper and knock it down, all your jams, or your door shuts, get between there really good so that the paint sticks to the edges. You know what? Where I mess up is I'll miss something. Like in the bucket truck, when I was painting that, I missed... I don't know, behind a hinge or something. And uh, I didn't sand it very good. And guess what happens? Paint doesn't stick. Now if you want to get away, you want to fix that and make that better, you can use an adhesion promoter sealer. There's sealers that have adhesion promoters in them. You might say to yourself, why don't I use a sealer? Well, one thing, they cost money. Second thing is, is that I shoot that color into those jams and now I've got you know two different colors going in the jams so I kind of don't like that I don't know sealers are great if you're going to paint the whole car if you're doing everything at once if you're going to but this thing I'm leaving the jams so I don't want to shoot sealer into the jams so you can do that you can use a sealer you know the best sealers are the epoxy primer really I mean that's like best sealer in the world but then you got issues with that you know the issue with the sealer with the epoxy primer sealer is that it's you know you got to wait about an hour before you paint it you use epoxy primer so if you're not in the spray booth which most of you guys are not going to be you're going to have an hour's worth of time for dust and dirt and everything to land in your paint so you end up with that issue Again, you start learning all the stuff you don't want to do, you know, and then over the years you kind of figure out, well, I don't want to do that. I, there's a lot of things that work, and then you kind of go, well, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. It depends on, you look at the job, what you're doing, and am I going to spend that much time on it? Am I going to, you know, it's just a hundred things you start thinking about as you do it, and then you kind of go, well... You know, I'll use this method for this. I won't use this. I won't use that. Maybe you're in a spray booth and you go, hey, I think I'm just going to epoxy prime the whole thing. And I think I might have missed some sanding spots. And it's a different situation. It's like, why well, I'm using 320 because it this sands a whole lot faster than 600. And, oh, 
what I was going to mention to you, and I mentioned it earlier, I think in this video, is that how do you get rid of the sanding scratches? So a couple of different methods you can use to get rid of sanding scratches. One, you can go through epoxy prime sealer. That works. Okay. That will help knock down a bunch of those scratches. It'll fill in some of them. Okay. Another thing you can do, and this is a little trick that not very many painters know. So if you, even if you're a painter, you can learn from other painters. I was talking to my buddy Freddie the other day, and we learn from each other every time we talk. A little something. And he, he told me, God, I never knew you could use 180 and paint single stage urethane right over 180. I said, yep. <laughs> I, that's the oldest trick in the book, man. I used to do that all the time on cheap paint jobs, you know, like a, you know, it, it, yeah, you get a little bit of sand scratch, but it looks pretty good. Be surprised how good it looks. You don't need to go 600 or anything like that. But on, on silver, especially silver, is the worst, you know, two stage color there is. To, and you'll get, sanding scratches in your paint you you get all done and you'll see where i've just sanded right here you'll see my sand marks and everything in it okay so how do you get rid of that how do you make that go down well one thing you can do is you can put a lot of paint on and usually that does it so you put about four coats of material on there usually that does it but look at how much material it is right now the other thing you can do is you can use, uh, they have a product from, uh, you can use Intercoat Clear is one of them, but that stuff's expensive now too, so that's over a hundred bucks a gallon. Or what you can, another thing you can do is you can just take clear binder and you can add clear binder to your base coat. You can add a lot more clear binder in there. And what clear binder is, basically just clear base coat. It's kind of like that, but it's not really exactly the same. It's a little bit of a cheaty method. I, I, you know, some people will be like, oh, well, maybe it doesn't adhere as well or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't think there'll be any issues with that. But you use clear bind. Uh, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use base coat. Okay, I'm going to use another base coat because I'm doing this whole car for the court. So, yeah, a whole thing I'm going to do with a quart. One quart of the exact color. Now, what I've got is I've got leftover silver. I'm not going to say where I got it. I'm saying, hypothetically, you can buy a cheap base coat for about 100 bucks a gallon silver. Shoot the whole thing with extra binder in it. And what that does is that'll fill the scratches. It'll fill a lot of these scratches. Fill it up really good. And then you put a couple, a couple of, uh, almost a little bit more than a drop coat. So I'll put one, like, full coat of base over it. Because the color it got to really close. Okay, then I'll go through and I'll put, so I'll have like four coats of, of, uh, of, base underneath my color and then I'll shoot one coat of regular the color base on here which I can easily do with a I got about a quart and a half actually about a quart and a half of paint so that's plenty that's more than enough this thing's tiny so shoot on a quart and a, shoot on a, one regular coat and then I'll shoot on a really dry in fact my first coat is not going to be very heavy just a nice light coat and then I'll just then I'll do a like a double drop coat on it which I'll be further away and I'll just kind of dust her maybe I'll cross spray it or something like that I don't know it all depends on how the silver lays down how I even I get it on depends on the spray gun I'm using if the spray gun I'm using is a piece of crap and it's got a fingery edge sticking up you know I've done cars with that before and made them look great guys are no, you can't do that. Yes, you can. If you're good, you can do anything. No, it's not being good. It's just experience. Okay. 
so you just double overlap. You overlap even more and you go faster. It's just so that's how you do it. But it's really hard to do that with metallics. So it's better to have a good spray gun. Uh, so I've done it with like clear before or, or single stage solid colors with a bad spray gun with a wonky fan. I call it a wonky fan when the fan's kind of like heavier on the top or something. Did that years and years ago when I was younger. Still got them with no orange peel or anything really nice. I don't spray like I used to. But anyway, that's kind of how you get, you know, rid of those scratches is add that binder in the first couple of coats. Just, I mean, I'm going to put probably 50-50 eh, binder and paint. And there's already some binder in the paint. So I'm going to have like a lot of binder in there. So, and I'm going to, you know, spray on the first two coats. I'll probably not reduce it. Well, I'll reduce it, but not too much. I'll take maybe the, a little bit less reducer than normal. And I'll spray it and I'll see how much I can get away with and kind of put it on thicker. Okay, the first couple coats. And then after that, I'll go thinner, 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 and then really thin. And then really, really thin. And then let it look at it. Make sure I got all my base even. And then, uh, you know, get my lighter out. Look at it really good. Check it all out. And then just go into the clear. Um, if you really are like a newbie and you really want to you're not sure you know you're not sure if you can you sprayed it even or not you can always get inner coat clear and spray over your base inner coat clear you can look that up it's a uh, house of color makes the best one um and you just shoot that on everything it's basically a clear base coat and, and then look at it all and then sand that down the next day and that'll even give you a better surface and then clear over that and that'll you know kind of give you a little heads up whether you did it right or not and that way if you have that inner coat clear on there, and let's say you push a run in on your first coat of clear, which is the worst thing to do, um, you know you don't want to get runs in your first coat of clear, because sometimes what happens is the clear will go into the base and make a color run, and that's no good. So if you uh, if you go into your if you go and you shoot the inner coat clear on, and if you do get a run on that first coat, it's going to be just the, the the clear base that's going to maybe run or whatever. It's not going to run, but it's just going to you know kind of pull the color, and there's no color in it, right? So it's just going to be fine. So if you do that, that helps a little bit. That inner coat clear, and then sand that, and then it's a lot more work, but it's your first time, you know, whatever, or you're worried. I don't know. I just do it. I don't care. That's why I remember back years ago shooting. We didn't have base clear. We had single stage metallics. <laughs> you want to paint something difficult, <laughs> try doing single stage metallic and try and keep it to look smooth with no orange peel and have the metallics even. Yeah. That's challenging. So anyway, I haven't done that in at least 40 years probably so anyway all right that's that for the paint lesson guys we're gonna paint this thing talk to you guys later well we've got this problem and you look at the forecast for the rest of the week it's like this again tomorrow and uh then after that it's supposed to be really windy hmm so we're just gonna do the old uh ignore it and go for it. You know, when you're painting stuff, the worst thing that can happen is I could get a little rain and I'll have to stop, push the car in the garage. So I'll leave the door open and, uh, you know, maybe have to wet sand it and do it again. You know, that's just what happens when you're, you could, or I could wait a week and I don't have a week. I need to get this thing done, get on to other stuff. So, uh, we'll just ignore it. Pretend it's not there, right? It's the right thing to do. All right, again, guys, if, you haven't, if you're new to the channel or you haven't seen, this is the War Sun paint booth. It's really one of the best ones I've used. Um, it's extra, it's really wide. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and yeah, it doesn't hold out rain, really. None of them do. 
I mean, if it just starts to sprinkle a little bit and I hear it hitting the tent, I can push the car in the garage and then let it dry and then let this run for a while, kind of beat on it, knock the beads off of it and probably pull it back in and keep going. So that's, you know, but I might have a couple places where it actually drips through if it does rain. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to, but it's not uh, exempt from the forecast. It is possible. So, you know, the whole idea is get it painted in here, slide it out, get it back in the garage, let it dry. Uh, this just helps to keep the paint off your ground. You can, they actually have a, a venting system for this and everything. Uh, the reason I like this one is it only has one fan that runs to air up the whole thing. And the second fan is for the exhaust. Um, you can choose to use that or not use that. Um, I could just do this without using the second fan and just let the, a little bit of overspray vent from it and it'll be, it'll be fine. Enough goes away. But if you wanted to, you could put the second fan on, which is right here. And that would fill up the inside of this and then it pressure feeds it out the sides and then you can put an exhaust fan on it and even suck it out of a building so it's got all the options on it it's pretty neat check the link in the description i've got a review on it too so if you want to watch that you can it has little things for lights to hang on it if you want but you get really get plenty of light through it and it's gray so it doesn't throw a color shade on everything so i kind of like all of those things and it's really wide so you can get around the car. The other one I had was a little bit more narrow. It worked fine, but uh, I painted a couple cars in there. But this one here is a little bit easier and I think it's a little cheaper on Amazon. So anyway, we'll get to, get done and start spraying. And so I got my air pressure set at 50. I got a desiccant, desiccant filter here. For final water I also got desiccant here and I got a lot of water traps right now first thing I'm gonna do is blow it down and tack it and then just start spray can and all those primary areas I went ahead and ran it with a scotch bright some of you guys you know if I sand it the day before okay if I just got done sanding it okay and it hasn't sat out let contaminants get on it I will not use the uh, oil or whatever all that stuff to clean it to get off all the contaminants usually it'll be fine if I do that that's a risk I take okay and it usually pays off because if I spend another hour sitting there trying to you know pre-clean on this whole thing and then go through and solvent and then use you have to use both and go over it with both things a solvent cleaner and a water-based cleaner and I use sprayway glass cleaner if I do that I'm going to be another hour into this okay now I'm going to be closer to the wind and the wind can be a problem with this thing so it works fine usually I usually don't have any fish eyes. I did other stuff with no fish eyes without using that. As long as it's a fresh sand. If it's if you sanded it a week ago, you better pre-clean all the whole thing really good. And, you know, use the sprayway glass cleaner or whatever you use. The water base and the solvent base. But I don't usually do it. And I don't have usually have any issues with fish eyes. Um... If I do, I'll just use fisheye preventer on the second coat. So yeah, you can get some flaws in it that way, but it's just up to you. That's I'm showing you guys other ways, not just one way. There's a million ways to do this. This is tricks I've learned, you know, from different guys over the years. And they, a lot of guys I worked with years ago, they did not use any pre-cleano, and they didn't get fish eyes. But it's you know, guys use it all the time on everything. Well, that's because they maybe they sand it a couple of days in advance. And when you do that, if it's been a couple of days, if it's 24 hours, usually it's okay. Like if I sand it the night before, I paint it the next day, usually that's okay. 
If it's sat out for any amount of time, gotta wash it. That's the way I do it. Again, you do it at your own risk, do your own thing, whatever. That's how I do it.
All right, guys, this is two coats of base. You can start to see the sanding scratches going away. And it's because if you look here, I'm burying it. So you can kind of see the metallics aren't that even. They even out pretty good still. But this is just the this is just to fill the scratches. So I'm putting it on kind of heavy. But I'm also giving it some color at the same time. Ooh, big piece of dirt there, but you can see that bloody look because I'm filling the scratches in. Okay, now I'm gonna put on once I let this dry for a few more minutes. Kind of so can it get tight now I'm going to put on base a little bit thinner and I got the fish eyes started to come a little bit because I'm putting it on so thick okay if you put on your first coat of base too heavy you're going to have fish eyes right I mean that's even if you clean everything and all that you can push fish eyes in you don't see any now so the first coat it was just starting to go in a couple of spots because I was putting on a little heavy you can see one right there now the now those will go away because I'm gonna start going lighter and uh, more normal coats of base and then we'll go into the correct color so we haven't even got to the correct color yet Again, this takes a little more time to do and you're putting on a lot more coats of base to bury those scratches but I don't know I'd rather do that than I would maybe I'll sand out that thing let it sit for a few more minutes here get a little scuffy get that rid of that bug or whatever it is over there I think it's a bug I don't think any piece of dirt that big but I'll let that dry and give that a little 800 wet you know it's okay to stop and sand something if you stop when you're on your base coat when they aren't clear you're kind of done but it's okay to stop you know don't, don't have to keep going because you see something you get a run stop let it dry put the heat on it sand it you know I use a you can use a heat gun or you can use a the, the uh, infrared lamps either one I use infrared but yeah, I'll put some infrared on there maybe, and I'll get that little scuff, get rid of that. You know, as you go, you just, you take your time. No hurry. I'm not trying to get a show truck out of this thing. This is not going to be, you know, I'm, the budget is not there. <laughs> this truck's only worth so much money. So I'm not going to put, you know, $10,000, $15,000 paint job on a truck that's maybe worth that, right? So we're gonna make it look like a nice paint job though. So gonna make it look kind of close to that, but not quite. There's some waves in the roof. You can see them. There's some good sized waves in there. Yeah, man, there's a little dent right here I missed. And we'll just pretend we didn't see it. All right? Talk to you guys later.
All right, so there could be a little bit of model in the hood. Don't know. It's maybe in the roof. It's hard to tell. Lighting isn't the best in here, so I'll be fine with it, whatever it looks like. We'll just shoot the clear on here. See a little something, but I don't know if that's going to show up or not. Could just do another drop coat, but fortunately my GoPro camera battery died, so I'm gonna have to go grab another one real quick. It all this filming stuff is a pain in the ass trying to film this because you're already concentrating on this. This is really takes a lot of concentration to paint, do the you know something like this. But anyway, I mean. Especially when you got to set up everything. It's not like when you're just in a spray booth in a shop, you know, and you just put on the GoPro and work it that way. But I set up all this spray booth, have to spread up everything, take it all down. And then just the cameras on top of that make it a little bit more difficult. But anyway, so it takes a little bit out of the, you know, sometimes out of the quality of the job that I'm doing because I'm thinking about other things. So anyway. Anyway, we'll just, I think it'll pick, come out great. Does it look fine for me? So, anyway, we'll just run with it. I, I can't tell if that's model in there or just the, those stripe things. It looks like it's just those things, but yeah, it's the sort of thing you run into. All right, we'll get the next coats. We'll be clear.
I don't know what happened right there, but... It must have doubled over on that somehow. Anyway, here's what you do. While it's still wet, let's see if I can get this off here. Get some more tape. Ain't the first time I've done this. Give it a little spray. It's a little light one. It's not good to do that on the first coat, but I don't know what happened. Seems to be some area in here that I'm double overlapping on, I guess. When I come down, I come down too far. Something. Anyway, but I'm also shooting it pretty wet, the first coat, because I don't want to have to put three on. This stuff likes to be pretty dry, and it is not the ideal weather for painting today. Painting in this cold, damp stuff is always t tricky. All right, so yeah, we're... This one wants to go all the way to touch, so... A little longer is better than too short with this, with this material I'm using, so... Anyway, yeah, it's probably about there now. All right, mask up and go at it again.
Well, let's take a look at it. Um, it's been a good hour or two since I'm done. I've got a bug right there. That'll come right out. Actually, it's laying right in the top. But this here, you know, it doesn't look too bad. It's easy to polish that out. There's a fatty right here, though. So it got a little heavier and then kind of went down. Uh, one of the things I do sometimes, sometimes I'll shoot underneath it a couple times with a clear, but I also use some... This is clear, universal clear blender. Can just go right underneath it. I've already done this once, and what it does is it kind of helps it level. You can only do that while the clear is still drying. It's not dry yet. It's still, there's a little sag right there. That one will come right out real easy. It's really nothing. A little saggy spot right there. You know, all this stuff is kind of expected when you have this really cold, gloomy weather. I mean, it's, I don't think it's even, it, it might be 60 degrees. I think it's in the 50s, like 59. It's a little cold to paint. I got a, there's a guy who goes, oh yeah, you never paint unless it's 60 or more. It's like, I just don't need wind, <laughs> you know? If it's real windy, I can't paint. So, you know, I can't be too picky about that. Just got to use what I got. So that's, you know, when you do stuff at home, that's what you deal with. You deal with, you get your day ready, you hope the weather holds and work with whatever you got. So this will look really good. When this is all polished out, um, there's a bit of orange peel in it. Which I would have got it with absolutely no orange peel if I would have had the air pressure right. I was having trouble with my with my uh, pressure regulator. I couldn't turn the knob. It's kind of stuck. And I didn't want to get pliers out and then have it break. So I was like, well, I'll just... It'll just have a little orange peel to sand out. But really, it's not much. And it's still leveling. This This clear will level until tomorrow, I mean, until later tonight, you know, I mean, it'll level three hours after it's done, so three or four hours, you know, 
So anyway, you can see that hood looks really smooth, super shiny. It has zero dieback. Won't it? Will, will it'll look just as shiny tomorrow. There won't be any dieback at all. Uh, and if you can see, there's no sanding scratches, even in the corners where I really had to push on the sandpaper. So when I do the main area, I don't push very hard when I'm using 320. I use that's why I use 400, so I don't cut through the stuff. And then, you know, and this is only 400. Everybody else uses 600, and there's really there won't be any sand scratches even in the sun. When you see them is when it's in the sun, and there won't be any. This is a little flaw. I don't know what the heck that was. I think it was in the primer or something. Eh, good enough. Once it's color sanded and buffed, it'll it, it, it'll take out all that. It'll look really super nice. So anyway, it's a whole lot better than Earl Scheib. Paint they used was garbage. This is good paint. So anyway, that's it for this, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Let's see your comments, and I'll talk to you in the next video.